Welcome to Four Seas One Family. I'm coming to you from my home studio in the early morning hours here in Taipei, and I'll be speaking to a friend I've met over 10 years ago in Bucharest, Romania. I'll be speaking to Roberta Serban, and I'll be talking to her just before she heads out the door to the 75th Cannes Film Festival in Paris, France. Now, I won't be talking to her about the film festival. I'll be talking to her about her efforts in trying to make life easier for incoming Ukrainian refugees into Romania. I'll be talking to her about the efforts she's been going through and the struggles she had to face to try to make life easier for incoming Romanian refugee children in particular. And I thank you for joining us here at Four Seas One Family. And uh, my presentation is that I'm 36 years old and uh, I'm uh, finishing cinematography. I worked in film industry and uh, when the war started, I just moved my production uh, office uh, working for Ukraine mm -hmm. uh, the, since the first day of the war. Wow. So uh, I think I, I could be named as a volunteer that is not uh, with ONGs all alone, uh, trying to do from home everything that could be done on internet, like strategy, logistic. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I moved, uh, I moved, I switched this to going directly to Ukraine and uh, being there and uh, starting to, to give uh, food donations and uh, all that kind of uh, humanitarian help that they really need. You know, Roberta, what what got you, you know, involved with this? Because, you know, the Ukrainians are having a very, very tough time right now. But, but you know, what what made you get up and, you know, and, and say, I want to do something. I want to help. What 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 inside you made you do this? I don't know. I think it's normal. I think it's not uh, it's not. Uh, we are the neighbors. I mean, uh, the, the history, it's very complicated between us. Ukraine has also Romanian speakers. We have Romanians that are living there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the history is very bad for us because we lo lost some uh, territory that now it's in Ukraine. So uh, in uh, the past, we were not like the best friends. Mm -hmm. And the amazing part is that we became now. Mm -hmm. The part is that this war started to connect us in a way that uh, we, didn't, uh, we never go to the sea, even if Odessa is very near, we never go to Odessa. We go Greece, mm -hmm. we go uh, France, we go Nice, we go Turkey. It was a closed uh, area. Uh, and now it's getting open because uh, Romanians are uh, trying their best to help. And when the Ukrainians are coming and they say, oh, my God, you really help and you give, really give everything for free. And I receive starting the border, everything like accommodation, food, supplies. And uh, we really care for them. I mean, we care because uh, I feel that I am the freedom now. I mean, this country that is a NATO state. And they just call for help for the first, first one that could hear them. Right. So we are the first one that hears them. And it's our duty. My duty is now it's a mission to make uh, this voice heard. Mm -hmm. so because I also call for help. I mean, it's not that I'm doing this alone. I call for help for others and others and others. But I could do that. I mean, I have the skills here. They don't. They don't have Internet. There are villages that are isolated. They have no phones. Mm -hmm. The, the people that are there are very old. The refugees are coming from all the cities. Evacuations is, uh, are passing through them villages. So they need help. And also, the I don't know who's fighting for what. Of course, we all know or we think we know. Mm -hmm. And we have our cities. And of course, nobody's perfect. For sure, somebody did something wrong and somebody's very angry. And it's a mess there between... Uh, what is going on between the army, right? But the civilians and the children 
and the innocent and the old people. They have no, yeah. no guilt. Mm. I mean, they are, they are the medium. Uh, when you see somebody and you judge and you say, look, he's thinking like this. I think he's a pro-Russian or he's thinking like this. I think he's an Ukrainian. <laughs> The way of thinking is uh, the way uh, of your medium. I mean, your medium, since the beginning of your life, you told me that you're an American and you don't know uh, East. I am an East uh, European and I don't know a lot about many other countries that are far away because the medium create your uh, spectrum of knowledge and also your spectrum of decision in time. Right. Doesn't mean you don't have any more a life, an independence and um you could choose what you want to choose. This is freedom. And if you don't hurt the other, you should be let to do whatever you think to do. Right. If the freedom doesn't um, make an other one feel oppressed. What is happening now there, I could tell you from my side, I feel guilty from the mini- first minute I get into that country. They make you, I mean, all the officers, all the army, the weapons, everybody's with a weapon, uh, the stress that they have, the thing, they don't talk like very nice, they talk like, you, there, you, there, right. car, stop, this kind of, uh, uh, you feel, you feel, um, you feel guilty. What are they telling you on the ground? Because, I mean, you, you really worked hard to put this together, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes, but what other stories are you hearing from the people? What I uh, see, it's uh, the wish, the will to stay home, to come back home, to build again. Uh, I saw, the, I don't see them, uh, what I saw, I saw organizers that are collapsing, oh. organizers that are crying. So the people that try to help them, that are also Ukrainians and are there, but with a hub or a city that is joyful. Mm-hmm. So it's not bombed. So they could stay there safe. Those people that help them are collapsing. Wow. And so them, uh, when are all together, when you see like 10 children in one room and um, nobody's doing nothing, this is a problem. Right. The problems are also at the borders. I mean, at the borders, they are big, big. I don't, you should wait like days when you're in a big truck. Oh. If you are coming from Ukraine to Romania, you should wait days. Oh, that is a problem for the export because they have to export all the uh, cereals that they have. They have a lot of cereals. You know, Africa is uh, one of the, they give supplies for Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ukraine is known about the, their uh, big supplies of cereals, of uh, grain. Um, um, the land is very good. So now they have this a lot of supplies and they can't send them to export because they don't have any ships. Oh. Odessa, Pula, all the south, it's, uh, the, so the port is not anymore. So they should send them by earth, you mm-hmm. know, by... Uh, by uh, land, yeah. By land, yeah. So it's very complicated because the it's a uh, huge, they uh, crowded, you should wait like days. And this is about organization, about, you know, yeah. what is collapsed, children together waiting in... Uh, in a, at the border to pass. They just, uh, when it was very hard and we received all the refugees and we had hundreds of refugees with children with no papers, but we received the, the children because we uh, the papers are uh, from Romania to pass Romania. You don't need a biometric uh, passport. Okay. But Ukraine put the uh, biometric passport in the, the days of the war when we had at the border hundreds of people waiting to, to pass. And they say, no, stop. You should return to Bucharest. Make a passport in a couple of days. Go spend hours, stay there, whatever, oh. because there were hundreds, and come back with the passport in one week, and maybe you will pass. And we had a big luck there with our uh, our ministers and our government that in two hours unlock, unlocked all this with the help of uh, Europe. And, mm-hmm. of course, I, I think it's a lot of help in this. 
but I don't know uh, if we could trust that much uh, our neighbors. Okay. I mean, uh, first in Serbia, if you go and they are our neighbors, they are pro-Russians in Belgrade. Ah, so like uh, you see Z on the walls, you see yes, you have the Z's, yes. bars, you go in the bars and it's Putin. You, they have picture with Putin. They have uh, T-shirts with uh, Putin. So there is another, uh, I don't know what is rising there, but it's... Um, it's for sure also if we uh you ask me also what how are they and mm -hmm. uh, how they, um for sure they are not um the ones that how to say for them heaven is beyond victory i oh. don't know it's oh. first is victory after heaven it's oh. not uh they don't the victory is not the heaven Victory is on earth and after heaven. It's another kind of, uh, we say uh, amin when it's over uh, mm -hmm. a church. They say amin when it's over the war. Right. So they have this uh, mission to win. And it's a very strong mission, this, to win this war. And we should understand that they should win this war because winning means our freedom. Right. We are free now because they fight. And it's very, very important to keep them fight, not fight, but keep them uh, in a optimism and hope and also give them a, to give them support to win this war is very important. They ask for help all the time. And it's also even if they receive because, uh, you know, I I talk to friends I, I say all the country now, but I talk from with people from France to help. And I, we receive help from Cannes, Nice, Monaco. We receive uh, help from Paris. They unlock, like, they receive from uh, Macron a lot of ambulances, a lot of trucks, a lot of uh, logistic help. Mm -hmm. So that now there are villages that are protected by men, men of the village, right. that go on the land trying to see what is going on. Where is the Russian? Because ha they have no drones right. to see from the top. So they should go walking without no equipment, without no... Um, if you have a binocle, how to yeah, say? Yeah, bin binoculars, uh, yes. Binoculars. See one kilometer in front of you and you could see who's shooting or who's coming. They can't. So they just go in the dark with no equipment. Mm. And they die like this. So in the village that we helped now, last week died like two volunteers that oh, wow. are a paramilitary and a doctor. They try wow. to rescue and they come with. So... That's why you say they have, they have, but they have in a, a system that it's a logistic, that it's a logistic in war. And if you think a normal logistic is not working, but when it's the war, you have no internet, you have no, um, how to say, I had, I received a phone call in the night from a hospital. Mm -hmm. Me as here, I received a phone call from a, um, a girl that was working in a hospital and she gave me the manager of the hospital. They were in a, how to say, a emergency in, uh, room. Right, ER. In a room in ER. And he said, I, I, he, know, he knew the language, he knew English, and he said, we want an ambulance. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know who are you. I don't know where are you. And when I heard the blessed and screaming and what it was in uh, it was like a chaos there and i said look could you please write a letter with this request and he said we had no more room uh, that room that uh, is your secretary room okay let's say right. uh, with computers we right. have no more yeah. so i said just put it in the hand and put it like uh, on uh, okay. with the phone the picture and send it like this mm -hmm. and we make it we will make it so it was like a, a, a scream of help that they ask in a civilian because we have it's this Facebook United for Ukraine that is a very, very big group. We did in Bucharest and also you, everyone did United for Ukraine, in you know, Germany, in France, in that all over the world. It's, I don't think it's political. Some of them are, some of right. them are just civilians united. So it's uh, anyhow they work. I mean, it's like in Woody Allen film. Whatever works in the right. world, don't matter who are you. If you want to help, you're more than welcome to help. Right. 
Your interest, of course, it, it's God that decides if you're interested. So yeah, well, gonna... You know, Ripper, it's like, you know, it's almost 2.30 in the morning there. And um, here it's, uh, what's this, uh, 7.30 here in the morning here in Taiwan. When are you heading back into Ukraine and how many people will be going back to you? Are there any specific places you'll be concentrating on at this particular time? I mean, how are you doing this? I mean, how many people are volunteering and, and from where are they coming uh, from? Hundreds. Uh, we have in the whole, in the whole country and also in the, at the borders. So we have like base camp logistic. We did it like in film production. Okay. We all did it exactly as you organize a long uh, film with huge crowd. And also um, our experience in crowd uh, festival, film festivals, also the experience of the authorities. Uh, we do all this together. So in my phone now, I talk directly to the prime minister if I call, hmm. with the minister if I call, because they all give all the phone numbers online. Right. So we have a list with the numbers of all the official uh, big of our country. And if we need any help, we just send SMS and they receive and they answer. Mm -hmm. Us for a civilian, this is amazing to, to do this work with a team that is not only you, it's your country in, uh, in this. What we don't receive, and I don't feel good for that, we don't receive, uh, from the first day of war, I didn't feel Europe to help mm. my country. And I tell you this because our border were crowded, it was dark, and it was very dangerous. We have mother, children, every, and we should do that uh, light equipment, uh, uh, the generators for heating them because it was very cold. It was, it's Russian cold in uh, the north, right. our uh, the, the north of Romania, and the, also in Ukraine. Is that it's that kind of brr when you uh, it's February, so the war the war started in February, and it was like this. So it was one month. We request three tons point five of uh, medical supplies. Mm -hmm. and we receive from Belgium after two weeks eight trucks, but eight trucks after eight after a couple of weeks uh, that those people could be dead already. Yeah. Also, this kind of logistic we needed the um, camera surveillance at the border because it's very important to have surveillance to know what is going on at the border and to have your so we had to do letters and to explain that this is a border that is important. Right. And I don't think this is a, and as a civilian, I, I had to, to write again, me as a civilian, letters to, to explain that the civilians that are working their hard need um, heating, uh, to be heaten, to, to, to make the soups, the hot soups for the children. They put them, I mean, our authorities do their best, but, um, in the same time, I don't think we negotiate for ourselves very good. I mean, we need Schengen to be uh, forever uh, safe. We don't have our Schengen. Our borders are very near. I mean, mm, all our Union, it's a very big border. So if you look at the map, it's it's huge. Our they could pass right from outside. Any right, it's a long border. It's a long border, so this border should be much more protected than it is now. Right. Much more protected. I don't feel protection when I uh, pass the border. Uh, how do you find the back door? Uh, the back door is the soul. The back door Everybody is the soul. soul. Everybody has a soul. Even if you die, if you die and you don't, uh, you're not afraid of dying, if you know that it's uh, something beyond, you just go uh, with a lot of uh, straight and a lot of... Uh, I'm not afraid of uh, dying. Wow. Uh, that's... It's, it's warm to hear that from... You know, I, I worry about your safety. I mean, you really have to... No worries, because we are all, I mean, it's not only me that is, I started from the first day of war at home, and in the uh, first day I just closed computer and uh, television. Mm -hmm. And I map, and I watch the map. Mm -hmm. And I watch the borders and all the territory, that is how to, how you pass the border, all the roads. 
Second day and the, the, that, that first week we sent volunteers to the border, civilian volunteers, and they make like base camp. We had big base campers, boys that are there and working like civilians very hard. They found uh, like a thousand accommodation in one evening or uh, they put the trucks in the middle of the city because we had no logistics. So they put a big truck in the middle of the big city and collected all the donation and go directly. It was the first road. We didn't know where to go and how to get there. So we go Odessa. Odessa, we go directly to the governor. So it was the first connection with the direct governor. And after that, we make the corridor with the police and the governors. So that was in the south. Mm -hmm. In the north, same, to Chernowitz. So we had a team with good boys. The good boys, we say, that were really passing. And sometimes they said it's legal. Sometimes they say it's not. In the beginning, they sent like uh, the Red Cross should send uh, some packages that are very little, and uh, they had only five thousand euros uh, medical stuff. Mm -hmm. Not if you pass that uh, price, you cannot send anymore. But they could send because they put more packages like this, and they it's it's very easy to to understand if you are human. Mm -hmm. right. So it's very important that we should unite. We should uh, do the logistic for ourselves. So if you're in Taiwan and they want to go, go, mm -hmm. be free. I mean, who keeps you there? I mean, look at the Ukrainians, five million people just go and they find a house and they have something to eat and they will come back and they will reconstruct the city. And they know that. I mean, it's just a, a thing that I forgot to tell you about them is the will. Mm -hmm. They a lot of trust and a lot of uh, hope and a lot of, um, I don't know how to say it's broke and started again. Right. Rebuild. And it's going up. So this kind of orthodox trait that it's I'm falling and I'm going up, it's in orthodoxy, this kind of when I do something bad, I go to, to uh, and I say, I'm sorry, God, and I just start it again. It's the same kind of, uh, if Taiwan understands this, that if you want to go now, you don't have to have money and plan. You have to have a dream. Mm -hmm. Just find your dream. If your dream is go to Canada, just search in Canada now the refugees that are, I don't know, you, for Ukraine. Canada for Ukraine. And you follow Steve that offer a house. And if in Taiwan starts something, you just call Steve and say, hello, you want to help the Ukrainians, right? Yeah. Could you please help a Taiwan too? <laughs> I saw you from last month on the internet and I really know that you have a house and I want to go. So this is the plan. Choose your way and do it. And if you are alone, somebody will come. Mm. It's not you're all alone. It's not that uh, it's not possible. And if you think and you hear that it's not possible, just start walking and you'll see. It's Maybe I'm wrong. Let's find out. It's too well. Maybe no. Let's find out. You know, because of time, um, you know, it's really late over there. Tell me, how can we, or how can we um, contact you to help? Um, what's the best way to assist you in your goals? Mm, I think you should pray. <laughs> I think uh, people should pray for peace. This is the most important thing because even if this war will stop now and maybe, hopefully, Ukraine will win, even if because it's the best way we don't need russians as neighbors wow but even if they uh if if, if this war will stop the nuclear will never stop i mean not soon these kind of weapons are uh, growing and growing in and each country should now they are trying to make their own so i'm not talking about this war that should stop i'm talking about weapon that mm. should stop this mm -hmm. kind of weapon. Yes. And if you don't understand that as civilians, all of us, and to make something together, because we have this huge opportunity to have connection on internet, to talk one of each other as civilians. I don't know you, James, you don't know me, but we talk now and we are connected. So if we, nobody invented like, a, how to say, you know, application on a <laughs> mobile phone. Right, an app. <laughs> Choose somebody and just call and talk or 15, 100 people to talk together without, uh, I think somebody invented it. But for sure, we should do that more. 
at least now when we have the chance to have the internet and to have this kind of connection, just to talk about, to talk about what we could do together. Because this Ukrainian uh, feeling that we live now give us a lot of humanity inside us and a, a lot of solidarity and build families and teams like family from people that didn't know each other since then. And uh, I, I don't want to, to say Romania is the best, or but please follow on the uh, internet, follow every site that is for Ukraine in Romania and see how we go with everything we have and we give. Mm. I mean, it's not, it's just, I need shoes now. I need a house now. You need a house forever or for, uh, you need summer at the sea or you need in the mountains. I mean, we really care where are they going because they are our... Uh, they are human. I mean, it's normal. Mm. It, you know, we need to talk more. I mean, we really need to talk more, and really need to to understand that these civilians that are the crowd that could die like um, insects anytime, they are individ. Yeah. And unique. And we need all of us to talk and to know that it, the other may be different, the Russian may be different, but it's human being also. The Ukrainian may be different, but it's a human being also. I don't care about who's the one that is crazy. I care the, for the one that is living and need has the right to live. Right. So if we are standing together for life, I think this uh, bomb will implode, will go. Right. Yes. Forever. I hope so. I hope so. I hope we could do that as a... As, uh, Human uh... humanity, yes. Yeah. You know, the, I've been trying my best for the past few years here on this platform to actually show that people have a lot more in common than they think. It's just that once we get past the obstacles or the things that keep us apart, or the people who are trying not to have us unify to learn about each other, even though our skin color, religion, Voices, languages are different. People have a lot more in common than they think. And, you know, Roberta, I'm going to be maintaining contact with you, and I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay safe, you know. And, um, you know, it's, what you're doing right now is something that's very honorable. And, you know, it, it goes beyond just having guts. And um, I hope the world appreciates what you're doing. And I really thank you for your time you've been giving me here. I think God appreciate and I hope that God appreciate because what I'm doing now, I'm doing for, uh, for because I think that the, those people that are dying there are souls that goes to heaven. Some of them that are innocent and really have no fault for this. Mm -hmm. So my, my hope is that we, we will all go to heaven and meet there and have a good party. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, we go there and have a good party. Yeah. Roberta, you stay safe. I'll be in contact with you. And thank you very much for joining us here at Four Seas One Family. Thanks for inviting me. It was a pleasure to be with you. And I really hope to meet you again and to talk to you again. Yeah, I'll get back to Romania and give you a big hug. Take care now. Yeah, from Bucharest. Please uh, come. Okay. Please, uh, you're more than welcome if you want to come. And also Taiwan, uh, all the Taiwan people that really wants to travel to Romania and to see and to live, maybe here they are more than uh, welcome. Thank you very much. You take care now.